Oh, hi guys, how are you? Good, Rachel. Good. Rachel. Uh, to start, you know, when you're in these family comedies, you have to kind of make the family thing work. And if it doesn't, then we are not going to believe anything that's happening. Where, how did you guys kind of make sure that that bond was there enough between you guys as actors? So then when you were playing these characters, the audience was instantly like, yes, this is a family we're kind of watching. I mean, I think that, um, honestly, I, I, would, I would just have to give credit to, to uh, you know, uh, to casting and to Brendan. Um, because everything just sort of seemed to work out. Um, uh, we were talking about, a, uh, you know, there was a first scene where, where me, Jeannie, Edie, and Kaylee were filming for the first time. And that's when sort of all of our, the things that we've been doing individually with our characters sort of came together into fruition um, in, in a familial sense. But, you know, you take these things day by day and, and hope for the best, but everything, was felt seamless yeah when the shoots are so short too there's no time for like rehearsals or to get to know each other mm -hmm. and I think we did maybe one read with everybody before starting to do it and in that read I was pretty confident going in that even though we wouldn't have a ton of time to create chemistry that it was already there sometimes it just is um and I have such admiration for everybody that I was working with that the familial love piece is, was very easy for me. It was almost, the harder thing was, oh, okay, so we don't really know too much history. I'm not a person who likes to put a ton of history on where there isn't in the script. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't know that much, honestly, even about like Charlie and I's relationship. Like there wasn't a ton in the script to say how these siblings feel about each other, but it was very clear, like that there was a, an extraordinary amount of love there and also a real, like, a, and also a real frustration with the other because you want your siblings to do well. Well, yeah, and Charlie, I was going to say, I was like, it's in the trailer, but one of my favorite moments is, you know, they go pick him up from jail and everyone is just like making fun of the fact that he was in jail, which I think is very much a family thing that it's like, if you have that kind of relationship, yeah, you're going to make fun of someone who really messed up in a situation. Yeah. When you get to have a character who, you know, he doesn't get to partake in the fun part of that, but he does get to have the smart ass response back. Is that fun for you as an actor to have those little moments where it's like you get to see his personality shine in the response? Oh, to these people? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun going up against uh, a whole, a whole, a whole gang of people. Um, especially, especially those three. Um, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> well, because it is, it's really cute because it's like obviously, like Kaylee, you have like the she's having a baby and she's like dealing with her mother and her grandmother and all these things but then it's like I do like that Charlie you do get to play like kind of not the oddball out but it is in a family of women it's the one dude who's trying to yeah. be like, hey what's up yeah 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 uh but when you guys are going on a set and you're working with somebody like Edie Falco which I'm a millennial I grew up watching the Sopranos and like that was like I was like oh that's that's an icon you, you can't touch her how is it kind of working with characters and whether or not you guys are improv or whatever it is to kind of build out your dynamic together? Brendan wanted a like a, a pretty good deal of improv and um and <laughs> everyone was very everyone was trying to get each other to laugh. Like the biggest the biggest win for me would be if. I said something off the cuff or improvised and we cut and I had Edie in stitches. That was like, I felt like, I don't care how the movie turns out. I made her laugh. <laughs> like that was, I was just trying to get my friends to laugh at me. Um, and if other people laugh at it, that's great too. Edie is a person I've wanted to work with for a very long time. And the fact that I got to have her as a mother and Jeannie Berlin as a grandmother, figure is a slam dunk for me um pretty life-affirming stuff yeah yeah <laughs> and like charlie when 
did you Todd, going back to your little one-liners did you get to improv any of those that you were like very excited that like, made the cut yeah i don't probably i don't remember which ones they were <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> like probably they were really good it blends like, together. It, with this one it was so nice because it did sort of blend together like i you know we would, i would i would, I would, I would you know I would, I would come up to brendan like you know the day before and come up with an idea for a line so i i don't really remember what was written and what was not you're like, I'm so good. It's they're probably all in. Not at all. It's I'm so bad. I don't know how to learn my lines. So let me come up with something. <laughs> to say. When Kaylee, you get to play, you know, like I said, this this woman going through like becoming a mother herself and like the three generations of women and all that kind of stuff that the movie unpacks, but that does also bring the heart of a, of like a family comedy. Take it to all together. Uh when you're playing a character that does kind of have to have that connection not only with the other characters but also with the audience what is how does that change how you approach a character or does it at all I'm always very aware of like what my place in a story is you know strangely like sometimes in this job you're asked to play plot devices because like the story needs them Mm -hmm. (laughs) and for for Wanda, her kids and what they're going through is like pulling her in several directions. So it's her story. And Mm -hmm. I think it's important as an actor to know what story you're telling. But when I'm, when I'm moving around the world as Sarah, like what she wants matters to me as an actor, as much as it does, I think to her as a person and everything does feel very real to me there's a there's a piece of it with her father that I found so like it was just one small thread that I was like oh this is like why does she want this wedding so badly why does she need for things to be going perfectly what is that for her and you know, if your life isn't going the way that you thought it was going to or you think that there's a correct order to do things in then this would feel very destabilizing. Mm -hmm. And that one thing, having a a wedding, having her dad walk her down the aisle, creating a very normal family memory for everyone seems to be the most important thing to her. So I just let that lead. Yeah. Well, and then on the the same vein, Charlie, when you do get to play the, like, I don't want to... The way to describe him wouldn't be a fuck up, but you know, like the kid who ends up getting in trouble and everyone kind of has to go and like protect this kid. When you're playing someone like that, what does it, what are like the challenges for you as an actor to like understanding like where he's at mentally throughout these decisions? Um, I mean, I think about what my life would be like if I wasn't an actor. Um, and, um, you know, I think I think I think a lot of young people don't know what they want to do with 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 their lives, and um, and like Kayla was saying, like you know that whole idea of like, are you doing the right thing? Like it's a very disorienting thing, um, and I think Mark is someone who doesn't have it all figured out, doesn't really know who he is yet, um, and that's okay. But I think he he in his own way. His, his own sort of private way realizes that like something needs to change for himself. Yeah, and you, you talked about it being a quick shoot, but I do think that makes, especially these like kind of indie comedies shine because it's like, yeah, they are quick shoots. And, and sometimes the audience is like, I can tell that this was like a quicker thing, but it also makes them very unique and special. How was it for you guys to kind of, be on a set that did have a quick turnaround but still like needed you guys to kind of come every day right at the ready to to bring whatever the scene needed wasn't i'm sorry go ahead no for me it wasn't so much about like the short length of the shoot and just like more that it was like a more intimate experience with the crew and 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 the actors like that's more what i think makes the big difference on a project like this is like the intimacy and the the you know the familial aspect and um everyone really like working together and like knowing ev- knowing everyone on set it, and um that's really the, the 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 advantage of it i think rather than like yeah the amount of time you so rarely get that experience of 
seeing every single person on the call sheet in front of you, like every single human being on the call sheet, I saw every single day of the shoot because pretty much, mm -hmm. especially the crew, because it was so small and it was very like pick up and move 40 feet and then shoot here. It felt, I mean, it's sort of the, I'll never get the experience of making movies in the 70s, but I like to think that this is as close as you can get with the sort of like ragtag, move things yourself, like quickly get to know 20 people very, very well, and then work with them every day. That's my favorite part of it is meeting new people. Um, and, you know, that's why I wanted to join this circus to begin with is I really like the work of it. And I'm always way more curious about what everybody else's job on set is anyway. So getting closer with those crew members and asking questions that I had for myself as a filmmaker and feeling safe to do that and be like, huh, why are we shooting this way? And getting those answers back because I have a relationship with the person was really gratifying. Yeah, so I was gonna say it is rare when we do have these movies come out. It is exciting as an audience member too, because it's we don't really have, especially little comedies anymore, but just movies that are very small and intimate being made. Um, but I do have to ask when you have a movie like this that is it is a comedy and it is about this family, what was one moment that was like in the script that you guys were like, I don't know that this is gonna stay, but then you were so excited that throughout the production and the cuts and everything that one scene stayed in the movie. I don't feel like anything changed much. I don't feel like anything changed much. I think yeah. Jim worked on this so long and you know, Jesse, Jesse Eisenberg has long been giving notes. I think they're so in sync and they, I think by the time that the script reached us, it was like any anything extraneous was gone and it was just the core of who these people are. And the scenes that were there, I don't think anything got Yeah, there. everything. And I felt like the reading, like one thing that struck me, with, like which I love, is like every scene had a cause and effect and had information about the plot that moved it forward. Like, I, I don't think, like the version I read, I don't, I don't think I could imagine cutting anything. Like, Yeah. I knew I was very excited to shoot the, in front of the hospital going into labor, but not wanting to enter the hospital. I know that that, was a scene I was anxiously <laughs> waiting as the days ticked forward because I thought that that was going to be both like very chaotic and very silly and very fun um, to do <laughs> uh, was be giving birth in a wedding dress. I, I really couldn't wait for that to happen. I do like you said Jesse Eisenberg and I was like this that is probably the least surprising thing about this movie that Jesse Eisenberg had his little finger on it because it just does feel like if anyone's bringing indie movies still out it's Jesse Eisenberg's behind them in some way shape or form yeah because I think genuinely he loves them and wants to make sure that that market is still alive and well mm -hmm. um I'm looking forward to seeing his movie this year that he made um, he came to set the night that we did all the family stuff. It was a night shoot and that in uh, front of the jail. And that was so lovely to get to catch up with him. And I think it's so genuine that he cares about it because I finished writing a screenplay and sent it over to him and he was kind enough to give notes. And I think that's just who he is, um, is that like he loves the written word and he wanted to be involved with all these people it means a lot um for a last quick question I want to ask uh now that it is coming out and people are going to get to see I'll be right there what for you guys is the most exciting part about that part of the process people getting to to see it yeah people getting to see it <laughs> yeah like you don't you don't know I think I think I don't take it for granted after COVID, especially that like something's going to find a theater. Like I, I really don't take it for granted that that happens now. And so that piece of it, like even, even if press is still Zoom, this is something that we get to now put in their hands. And 
I am hoping that in the same way that Charlie read it and felt connected to it as if it was his family, and I felt that same way, that the audience members can also see themselves and their families on screen. Yeah, uh, I can't wait for everyone to get to see it. And thank you guys so much for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Thanks you guys. Have a great one. Bye.